At the uh, WJBC studios, 10.05 in the morning, we're calling up north. I'm not sure where this area code is, but uh, we have reached the man. Red Green, how are you? Well, if I was any better, I'd be twins, Ken. <laughs> I don't know if we could take that, you know? Oh, I don't think you could. <laughs> Come up at Possum Lodge. That's 145 beer stores north of Toronto. Oh, that, that is way up in North Country then, yeah. There, yeah. If you ever want to come up here, just drive north. If you notice the roads are getting better, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> I have to tell you this. This is the truth. We were on vacation last year. We went out to the Grand Canyon. So we were in a natural setting to, to run across you, uh, staying in a little lodge right outside the Grand Canyon. And uh, this show came on. And I watched a guy try to uh, change a headlight on a car with a crowbar. And I thought, he doesn't have the proper tools, or but he does have the proper attitude, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was on the floor because I thought uh, I thought you were really serious about doing this. <laughs> I'm not real serious about doing anything, Ken. <laughs> well, yep. I have an attitude, that's for sure. I used to be in the music business, and my plan was, if you sing loud enough, they'll think the band is wrong. <laughs> it's, it's a matter of confidence, then, isn't it? All it is. Yeah. I'm wrong, but not in doubt. <laughs> you grew up in Canada, I understand. It was, uh, well, in fact, you, you were... Got a bit taller. I'm not sure I grew up, but yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Canadian guy, and uh, we do this show up in Canada, but, uh, you know, a sense of humor kind of transcends all borders, I think. Yeah, it's kind of a cross between home improvement and uh, some kind of uh, animal thing, I think, isn't it? It's, and designing women, I think. Is, is that it? That's in there. Although we don't have any women in the show, we still have a... Quite a few women fans. One lady wrote me a letter. She said, I sit in the living room. I watch with my husband. He thinks I'm laughing at the show. <laughs> I like that. I was going to say, it's kind of like Wild Kingdom with Lumber, isn't it? <laughs> by golly, I like that one. I haven't heard that one. The Wild Kingdom <laughs> with Lumber. Yeah, that's it. You go ahead, Jim. You wrestle that two by four to the ground. I'll wait in the Land Rover. <laughs> that's it. I'm the Marlon Perkins of Splinters. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this old house, I think, should be titled This Darned Old House, don't you? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's done any work. This old wound. This old wound. Do you do you call the uh, medics before you start any project? Or? We have uh, socialized medicine up here in Canada, and that's the only reason we can afford to do this program. <laughs> you go through some vehicles. Uh, oh, by golly, we do. Yeah. You have quite a big budget. It looks like it's a big budget show. Oh, it's huge. It's huge. We're doing this show for Home Improvement's catering budget. Home Improvement's catering budget? Yeah, what they spend on meals, we spend doing the show. People say to me, what do you do with your outtakes? I say, we air them. <laughs> oh. It's one take. <laughs> Absolutely. You do it in front of a live audience, don't you? Well, we do, yeah. We're shooting right now, and we have about 300, and they come from all over the place. We've had people there from Illinois and uh, Colorado and Texas and Florida and everything. I want to say hello to my friends in Peoria. I was down there. You are. You were WTVP. I think I was down there in probably in March. And uh, help them beg for money. I don't mind doing that. I like I like public television because I really like the viewers taking control of what's on there. That's, that doesn't happen that often. Yeah, uh, grovel in the gravel. I have no problem with that. <laughs> you uh, you brought in some dollars and uh, raised enough to keep the show on the air. And <laughs> I guess that's important. Well, I, it's kind of a double edged sword, I guess. <laughs> Good news, bad news thing. We raise money now. You have to buy the show. Yeah, that's right. The Red Green Show. It's actually the new Red Green, which uh, which makes me think there must have been an old Red Green Show, was there? Yeah, yeah, same crap, different shirts, basically, Ken. You know, we had done three seasons up here in Canada, and then we were going to start our fourth, and we thought, well, we should call it something else, so we'll call it the new Red Green Show. Apparently shows do that, and uh, so we did it, and it hasn't really made any difference. Oh, uh, you know what, we got a little bit of computer, we got some computer animation, Harold got a deal on uh, on that, was for an ad for something that fell through, so we used to go. <laughs> what is that thing that Harold wears around his neck? It kind of looks like a keyboard, and yet it's, what is that thing? Well, that's a uh, video digital effects CD-ROM interactive multimedia unit that, that he wears there, and, and, and he's supposedly affecting all the different segments in and out of the show. It started with uh, the basic unit is actually a control panel off a, uh, a two-inch video machine. It's an old video tape that, that used to use two-inch videotape. And everywhere I go, you know, some techie will run up to me and say, I know what that thing is Harold's got. That's an Ampex 1200 control panel. And then I'll say to him, oh, geez, another two-inch guy. You know, and it kind of puts them in their place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Harold is your uh, your brother, or no, it's your nephew. He's my nephew. He's my brother's son. Yeah. The way he got on the show was uh, I had borrowed money from his dad back when he worked for the bank and could get it. And I had a little trouble paying that one back, so uh, I took Harold on. And as soon as Harold's pay adds up to what I owe his dad, he's going to be out of there, Ken. 
He's going to be out of there? Oh, he's got to get out of there. He'll be gone then. Oh, my gosh. I've yeah. seen him at all. I mean, that's, that's difficult to work with, you yeah. know. You incorporate different segments on the show. I've noticed this. And some go back to some game shows where you're trying to identify a word. A word will be written out and the other player. You have to give them clues. We have word association. Word association. I had one there where I was trying to get Dougie Franklin to say the word feminine. So yeah. I said to him, uh, masculine. He says, Chuck Norris. I said, opposite. He says, Willard Scott. So I said, you know, if you see a woman and she's real pretty, you say she's, he says, not from around here. <laughs> And we worked ourselves all the way down there. Finally, I said, Harold, and he said feminine. And we got it, you know. <laughs> Works out. That's right. It's 11, <laughs> 11 minutes after 10 o'clock. Red Green is on the line. If you have a question or comment, maybe you've seen this show. Uh, maybe you've been lucky uh, and haven't. Uh, hey, 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 hey. 829-2345 will do it. You know, you have one of those great, have you ever tried to, yeah, you do sing, come to think of it, don't you? I got a, I could do a campfire song for you if you want, Ken. Remember, we're on the air, of course, but everything that's. Everything I do is. Is, is arable, isn't it? Squeaky, it's squeaky. It's so Squeaky weird. clean. Squeaky. Why don't we make them listen? That's my, my, my motto. You know, you get, oh. on, you get on and you grovel, you beg, but I have to pay the light bill with commercials. <laughs> oh, all right. So we'll do this. And, of course, you can catch the Red Green Show on WTVP. We'll tell you when uh, as we go along here. It is a, it's a funny show. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different kind of thing, and we're happy to have them with us. Red Green this morning. Sounds like a contradiction in colors here. Red Green is with us this morning, and um, he's a... He's an outdoorsman who relies heavily on duct tape. We can talk about that in a moment. Rick, you wanted to talk to Red? That's exactly what I was going to bring up, the duct tape. Oh, okay. I wanted to uh, make a comment in that there has been a shortage, from what I understand, of duct tape in the United States due to the extensive use of duct tape by Red Green. I wonder if he has a comment on that. Uh, I think it'll be registered as an endangered tool by the end of the year. It would definitely, well, we've had an effect on that, and, uh, you know, we, we're on PBS, and they're always looking for, you know, underwriters and stuff, so somebody from, from uh, on our behalf went to 3M and said, you know, we, we think your duct tape sales are way up because of our show, and they said, oh, yeah, we know it is. Thank you very much. Now, what was your question? <laughs> you know, they, just, they don't need to do anything more. That's, that's great. I know I, I watched the special you had on PBS a couple of weeks ago when you put the... Um, gullwing doors on the, is it a Granada? Oh, boy. Uh, you had to use a, a case of duct tape on that. Absolutely, yeah. There's quite a few rolls on that with the garage door opener pulling her open. Oh, yes. That, We've yeah, had a lot of comment on that one. Have you ever been injured doing the show, seriously? Oh, yeah. I broke my nose one day, and I, I'm missing chunks of my fingers. But, you know, if you're not prepared to give up parts of your body for your art, you'll never get anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, you got to watch him with a chainsaw, too. That's right. Oh, man, we get our chainsaws get fan mail. They tell us that the chainsaws in the background are running a little rich on the high side, that kind of stuff. You know, unbelievable. Our, our fans are the greatest people in the world. You know, you're talking about duct tape. I did a show at Christmas with Mark Hadfield, who's a, a Canadian astronaut, and he said the, the astronauts are red-green fans, and they actually took a roll of duct tape up to the Mir Space Station to give it to the Russians on behalf of Possum Lodge. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Well, was it autographed? No, they didn't get an autograph. They didn't want to decrease the value. <laughs> <laughs> Bridging gaps. Thanks for calling. Thanks, Red. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Teresa, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you, Teresa? Too bad. Not too bad. I uh, wanted to, once again, thank you for coming to Peoria in March. Um, and for those who missed it, uh, there's a possibility that it may be back. Anything's possible. That's right. Well, the show is on, isn't it? Yes, it is. But you're saying Red may be back? Uh, well, the special program that we aired in March oh, okay. uh, with Red, uh, he was here in our studios, uh, we may just rebroadcast that. So it's a possibility coming up. Well, yeah. we had a lot of fun doing that. Oh, that was a riot, even though the weather was bad. The weather was terrible. I think we just uh, took a while to get down. Uh, I was driven down from Chicago. Was that Chuck that drove me down yeah. there? Yeah, Chet. Chuck drove me, Chet, right. He drove me down from Chicago, and we just walked right in and went right on, and they had a little live audience there. It was, that was a lot of fun that night. We had a, we had a good time with you and raised, raised basically the money that uh, brought back uh, or bought the new series. Okay. Let me get the information here. Starting on the 20th of this month, it'll be on at uh, 4.30 in the afternoon on Saturday, right? Uh, 4 or 4 o'clock. Let me check my program guide here. Teresa's got a program guide. So. Yeah. It's 30. That's right. Okay. And that's uh, also on Tuesdays at, or Thursdays, I'm sorry, at uh, 10.30. 10.30 in the evening. Right. Okay. Right. Well, I'd say it's a good show. We're happy to have him with us today, and we'll invite people to tune in WTVP to watch the Red Green Show. We have a lot of fun, and, and you tell my friends at, at WTVP there, Teresa, that I've got that model caterpillar sitting right up on my desk. Oh, great. We appreciate that. 
we appreciate that. We had a lot of fun and uh, and uh, offered a lot of duct tape, but it was autographed, you know, so that increased the value. Of course. We were Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. And it's 10.18 in the morning at WJBC. Red Green, if you have a question or comment, I wanted to hear you sing a song, though, because, you, you know, this mellifluous voice uh, um, has an opportunity to sing on the radio now. Here it comes. Okay. In the cool of the evening when the sun goes down, when there ain't nobody else around, the bunch of us gather and strip to the buff, because boys will be boys and enough is enough. We go skinny dipping, flop and flipping, when nature's calling. We go cannonballing. The heart rate rises, the spirit soars. The moon you see might even be yours. Skinny dipping, slapping my butt on the lake. That's it. <laughs> All right. You did that sort of uh, Acapulco, didn't you? Yes, I did, and I do it in many of the Caribbean countries. <laughs> it's 1019. We're back in a minute, aren't you? On WJBC, right after we hose the place down. It's 1021 in the morning. The Red Green Show is a manly show for manly men. I think that's a safe assumption, although some women do like to watch it. Right, Red? A lot of women enjoy it. I had a, I was doing a thing in uh, Nebraska, and a woman leaned way over the table and said to me, I don't know why men watch this show. Don't they get it? <laughs> <laughs> we do poke fun at but, you know, we had a reviewer up here say to us that we managed to send up and celebrate at the same time, you know, what it is to be a guy. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a, there's a lot of thinking these days. I think if, if everybody felt like a red green, the the landfill the landfills wouldn't have the big problem they do today because you the recycling you recycle stuff. Yeah, recycle, reuse, renew, and you know, I'll tell you, you know, not that I do hunting and stuff, but I, hunting takes a lot of a lot of flack and even fishing, you know. But if you boil it down to the basics, it's called self-sufficiency. You know, the ability to be able to feed and clothe yourself, you know, without a, without a government, without even money, you know. And, uh, <laughs> is that the way it is in Canada? Well, I mean, it's, wouldn't it be nice to think that you could? <laughs> yeah. Would, you'd like to just be independent and be able to make it on your own. Now, you're going to get in. You don't do gardening on the show, do you? Well, no, because, you know, there's enough things in life that bore you. You don't have to go looking for them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I'm thinking anybody who has, uh, let's see, recycled toilets to make an intercom... Oh, that was a beauty, wasn't it? That was a good show. You can uh, answer two calls at once. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, some of the other stuff. You've uh, you've done some wonderful things with... Oh, yeah. Made a patio table into a windsurfer, turned a hot water heater into a one-man sub. Yeah. Oh, we've done lots of stuff. Yeah. So you spend a lot of time in the studio and a lot of time down at the dump, I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, actually, people now are bringing their stuff to us, which is, I guess is a mixed blessing on even the best days. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we, we, we managed to, you know, take something and just keep hitting it with a hammer. You're either going to fix it or turn it into something else, you know. <laughs> Let me ask you, why do you have, you know, since your name is Red Green, that's a very colorful name. Is there a, is there a story behind the name Red Green? Well, you know, we kind of, there was a show up here called the Red Fisher Show. Yeah. I used to, it was a fishing show. I'm sure you have those in Illinois. Oh, yeah. And I used to watch that show. It seemed to me he had the attitude that nothing would bore you. <laughs> you know, like it was his job to fill the half hour, it was your job to make it interesting. <laughs> I kind of, I was kind of having fun with the Red Fisher name. I thought, well, Red Green, you know. And now they tell me I'm a genius because every stoplight is a promo. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. So that's the it way we got the... going, and we just uh, kind of expanded from uh, the fishing thing. And... Your middle name's not yellow, is it? No, my middle name's my own business, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have to ask you this, though. Since you have such a colorful name and it's a color show, why do you have the black and white segment? What is what is the deal with the black and white segment? Well, that's the Adventures with Bill thing there. And yeah. It, you know, it's the, it's the cameras that we use, and it, it harkens back to another time. It harkens back to the older days when you had the Laurel and Hardy and the Mac Senate and all that kind of stuff. So it just, to me, it seems to work a lot better when you don't add the color to it and you maybe don't do it up to the full quality that's capable of being delivered in, in the 90s. I think it's just... Uh, it gives it more of a classic feel, and also it distances it for the audience a bit, so they think, well, this was done a long time ago, so I don't have to worry about this guy being in the hospital right now. <laughs> I got it. That's a very good point. It's like the old British comedies. You ever seen some of those that they ran in Britain where whenever they did anything indoors in the studio, it was always done in videotape, but as soon as they went outdoors, it was on film. You know, they still do that. Do they really? They'll do that. What's the reason for that? That uh, always drives me nuts. It's It's a budget thing. It's a budget thing. It's cheaper for them to go, because they didn't have the handheld video cameras, you know? 
they have a handheld movie camera, but so they take that out. But they all their all their uh, uh, studio cameras were studio cameras, you know, on the big tripods. Yeah, and, well, I figured it had to be kind of a union thing or something where they had to employ a certain amount of people. No, it's just no? Uh, it's easier to shoot film outdoors, and so that's what they would do. But it's unbelievable that they think the viewer doesn't notice. Like, what an insult! You know? <laughs> yes, yeah. Film sounds di- or look, sound, the sound is different and it looks different. Oh, all the way. I mean, do all your outdoor scenes on radio. That's what we do. Yeah. Do you have an opportunity for people, you say, to uh, to write and get tickets if they want to see the Red Green Show at this point? Well, uh, yeah, I'm I'm very I, I'm I'm happy to say that there was a high demand and they they go real fast. We don't have any more vacancies for this season, but we'll be going again next year. Uh-huh. We have a a fan club with over fifty thousand individuals in it, and I I mean individuals. And that number is one eight hundred Y Possum. That's Y P O S S U M. And if you call that, they'll they'll let you know. But I would say leave her now till ninety seven, like January, February, unless we're canceled. In which case, you could leave it longer. <laughs> I don't think there's a chance of that happening. But you do have a video out. Yeah, the best of red green. I wanted to call it the least worst, but they didn't have room for that on the package. And it, it's a lot of segments that the viewers have said to us, these are the ones that they really enjoyed. So we, we kind of jammed, uh, jammed that full, out of, based out of five seasons of doing the show. We're, in our, we're actually producing our sixth season right now. Wow, isn't that something? And if people want to get is the video available in the store, or do they call, or how do they get there? Well, you know, it's available in the stores, but I, I'm not familiar with what the stores are in your area. So they could call that same number, 1-800-Y-Possum, and, and we'll get a video that way. Or they can just look for it in their store, or they could call... Uh, WTVP, I'm sure they'd be happy to sign them up for a public television membership. Okay, that sounds great. The Red Green Show, which is, of course, on WTVP, as we mentioned, Channel 47. Do you have one particular episode that really stays in your mind? For some reason, I guess maybe this was the first one I saw, where you were repairing the headlight on the uh, car with a crowbar and uh, an electric saw. We had a lot of comment on that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. And that, uh, the, the gullwing door thing, too, is great. The gullwing door we had a lot on. I got one, a lot of comment on one where I put a window air conditioner in my van. That didn't really go that well. <laughs> Okay. I did an oil change one time where I, I couldn't jack the car up because there's nothing. The bumpers kept falling off. So you took the engine out. Yeah. I had a lot of comment on that one. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites was to, uh, we took a, a stove and turned it into a reclining chair. Now, you got to picture this. You cut the top off, cut the back off. You go around the back, slide your butt in, lean up against the inside of the door. You run a bungee cord around there, and that's your reclining back. You reach around, open the oven drawer. You keep your remote and your TV guide in there. And you pull the oven rack out backwards, that's your footrest, you sit right down on the burner with the unit set on bun warmer, you're there for the winter. <laughs> well, that was a classic. I always, I always, I'm looking forward to the next one. I mean, we're still having a lot of fun. I think the shows that we're doing right now are the best ones we've ever done. And uh, we've added some new features. We've got a, a, an emergency line for men, Possum 911. <laughs> Guys will call in with a horrible emergency, like they can't find the remote or something of that nature. <laughs> and we have a new club, Men Anonymous, where you get up once a week and admit that you're a man and try to apologize for it. <laughs> and these days, that's a safe thing to do. It's the only way to go. It is. Red Green, it's a pleasure talking to you. And um, what is your favorite line there? If the women don't find you... If don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. There you go. Keep that duct tape handy. They don't find you handsome or handy, they'll eventually stop looking. <laughs> Which is okay if you owe alimony. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Good for you, Ken. Red, it's, it's nice to visit. And all the best with the new season, and we'll keep watching for you on w, WTVP over in Peoria. I'd like to visit with you again sometime. You ever have a chance? Why, well, we'll have you back on. Well, I appreciate that. You keep your stick on the ice, we'll talk to you again. All right, thanks, Red. All right, bye now.